Were we not gonna talk about the fact that you're missing an eye? Okay, we're just getting naked for, okay, this is an orgy. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Fallout. We're now onto episode six, which is called The Trap. So last episode, we focused a lot on Lucy and Maximus. Uh, Maximus got himself into a bit of trouble because he revealed his secret to his new squire, and the squire did not take it well. Anyhow, he ended up getting locked in his suit, but Lucy saved him, and the two of them decided to work together to track down the squire because the squire, of course, has the head, and we know why Lucy wants the head, but we know that for both of them, the head means different things. For Lucy, her father, for Maximus, the chance at surviving the brotherhood, taking him out for letting his knight die. So they're both headed in that direction, but we see that they, um, on the way there, Maximus ended up getting shot and it was pretty bad. So they saw what they thought was a hospital, which turned out to be a front for another vault. We don't know what vault number it is at this point yet though, so we'll have to see. But my guess is that I don't think that Lucy or Maximus are gonna get out quite as easily as they got in. And that was pretty much it, right? Yeah, because we didn't actually have anything from the ghoul this episode, but that's fine because this was really to give us more insight into Lucy and Maximus and give them a reason to start working together and bonding, right? And the other side of it, of course, was Lucy's brother back in Vault 33, figuring out that Vault 31 might be the center of all the strange things that have been going on, that the answers are probably in there and that they are probably holding back on some pretty huge secrets that the rest of Vault 33 is completely oblivious of. So yeah, many pieces of the puzzle are coming together and kind of starting to form this picture. So I'm ready to jump into this episode. Looking at the thumbnail, it looks like we're going back to the ghoul and seeing what he's been up to since he found his lifetime supply of whatever it is he needs in those vials. So let's jump in. But just before I do, you know the drill. If you would like to be kept up to date as to when I do these uploads or anything for this show or anything else you might be watching of mine, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and join the fam as well as that, that notification bell, the like as well, if you're liking it, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. Star of stage and screen. Oh, wow. He did more than just one ad. to talk to you about my latest picture. No, today I'm here to show you... I don't know if that name is John. Cooper. Coop. Wow. There, that's better. Not Coop selling the actual vaults he hates so much. Or starting a fire in one. Why would you do that? Where you'll wave howdy to any one of your 200 neighbors. 200? On your way home for an enchanted evening with Okay, your so if each vault had that and there's 33, that was quite a few. Oh, Lloyd and Cassandra here are both scientists specializing in the effects of radiation on human DNA. Oh, really? And we'll be living and working right here in Vault 4. By choice? 80 volunteers will be conducting a five-year trial of Vault 4. Wow, that's dedication. You all are heroes in real life. Couldn't pay me my weight in gold. It's a great take. You happy? Fellas, are you happy? All right. Okay. I uh, came over to Vault Tech in Q3 after a 10-year stint at West Tech. That means nothing to me. You designed the T-45 power armor. Your first of its kind. You know, I, I oversaw the, oh, okay. the rollout. Okay, Brotherhood. Product management was never my bag. I'm more focused on HR, R&D now. The way he just blew that off. Management timelines. Do you notice how his wife is chatting somebody up in the background? It sounds complicated, but the future of all humanity comes down to one word. You know what's that? Huh? Management. Oh. Death to management. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but, but askins. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, she's like, pardon me. Uh, nothing against these colleagues of yours, but what do you say? You she looks uncomfortable. Knock back a couple of pina coladas by the pool. Mm -hmm. She was already house. checked out of this marriage. We go for a couple of hours. We shake a few hands. It's at our house. Why? All right, sis. She was in deep and she was stringing Coop along. I really want to know why and why she didn't feel like she could be honest with him. Mm. Yeah. I love that one too. Was Look at these women ball. drooling over a married man. Can you get yourselves together? Mr. Howard. Oh, it's Bud again, isn't it? Bud Askins. God, go away, Bud. It's annoying that your name is Bud because you're not my Bud. I, Bartholomew Codsworth, am ever ready to serve. Bart. <laughs> Perhaps when you finish your shift, we could head up and party in the hot tub. What do you think? Sir. Of but you, my friend, you know which way the wind is blowing. And it's that. A world run by people who wear pocket protectors to a pool party. <gasps> he already has one of the wrist things. Did his wife know this was going to happen before it happened? My agent got them to throw in one of those robots. 
<laughs> Fuck were they thinking every time I walk into my own house, my own boy is saying, hello, sir, do you want to sit down? The future, my friend, is products. You're a product, I'm a product. The end of the world is a product. He's not lying about that. I feel like that man was a voice actor, the British one. His voice sounds very familiar. I, Bath Bath, only need Cogsworth, I'm ever ready to serve. Oh, right. That's a great link back that they just created there. Oh, look at you. You got so high. Oh, hello, now they're going to take your whole stash from you. That's illegal around these parts. He didn't actually do it, to be fair. The government. Damn. The government still exists? Whose government? I'm confused. But shame on the ghoul for sitting there and getting so blitzed that he got caught. Bro. All he had to do was take his vials and leave. Vault 4, still standing. Okay. Oh, this is the first one. That's the one that was the the demo. Oh, wow. Ew, ew, ew. There you go, buddy. Using teeth for ammunition. Always finding new ways to kill each other. That's there, disgusting, and it would definitely cause a bacterial infection. Oh, and we found his armor. Our surface foragers are bringing it back now. Oh, that's great. Thank you. It's not ideal for us to stay put, but... That's a lot of injections. I don't know if you've been to the surface, but it is... Unhygienic. We just need you to stay in quarantine a few hours longer to make sure you don't track in any contamination. Thank you so much. Yeah, I don't trust it. You smell good. What? Don't smell like radiation and death. You wanna have sex? Wow! Okay, well, you know what? Direct is good. You use my cock. Yeah. Okay. I don't know, uh, that weird thing could happen. Weird what? thing? Weird thing. Well, it's just for some guys, not me. It gets all big and hard like a big pimple and then it pops. He's a virgin. It's gross. I mean, you know, that's, nothing uh, wrong that's with being a virgin, but completely normal. virgin to the, like, all the, time. the education. Time, ideally. Wow. I'm a knight. Uh, and? You think the knights aren't out there making it pop? Okie dokie. Now you want to, because you're thinking about it. That's crazy. That is so crazy. But it makes sense, right? Like, who knows how he was raised? He wouldn't have gotten the basics of sex education. But it's funny what we... Tests up what? But yeah, it, yeah, he wouldn't have gotten the basics that a lot of us take for granted. You heard the doctor. Besides, we made a deal to find that head together. Her finger's so gross. Also, I would feel bad. I think these people are trying to trap us here. You're right. Yeah, a little too happy. This is a cult. Exactly. Everyone's smiling. I mean, I truthfully, so is the Brotherhood. In the vaults, we recognize that we all need each other. Just like I needed you on the surface. Oh, careful. You might make it pop. Overseer Benjamin, this is Lucy and... Tyler. Where's your other eye? Stay out of level 12. Obviously, we'd prefer you not go there. Oh. Why is that obvious? If there's no pencil on the sign-up sheet, please let me know. I do have pencils. Were we not going to talk about the fact that you're missing an eye? Uh, any questions or concerns beyond foosball or pencil? Why do you have one eye? Birdie's available. No one's talking about it. Now he's got a noise on his head. Hi. So, so it's normal. Who else got extra parts? I'm talking about his eye. Lots of people have one eye. Well... Yeah. But in the center of their face? Sorry. So Vault 4 be different like that, where the genetic testings be happening. Oh, right, that's right. They said it was the one they were testing radiation effects. Guess they're still doing that. Bro, if you didn't stash some of those vials, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, we're going back into the past again. Couldn't show biz buying us a ranch up in Bakersfield. Does she look like the woman who wants to be running a ranch? And help me raise... Chickens. <laughs> no. Exactly. Got me second guessing the whole city life. Mm. Once again, she's detached. Oops. I need this job, Coop. It guarantees us a spot in the vault. We've got money. We can buy a spot. In the vault. One of the good vaults. Oh, what's the not so good vaults? Trust me. Yeah, you're making that hard. You're do you're keeping a lot Please. of secrets, sis. I want to root for you, but you're coming off shady. And in the end, y'all got divorced and he had the daughter. 
So what happened? Voltex the fucking devil, man. My wife works here. You really think Barb's a devil? No, no, okay, I... She might be turning her eye to the evil. Charlie. But they can't sell bolts if these peace negotiations go through. Exactly. Has a fiduciary responsibility to... So it comes sure. down to, they started it, they started the war, and then every time this, it looked like it was going to get peaceful again, they drop more. Mm. And after 10 years of war, the U.S. government is broker than a joke. The cattle ranchers are in charge, Coop. Oh, come on. He's telling you the truth and you're not listening. Come on, man. You sound like you're a cult. And you're sitting here defending a system that's ready to set the world on fire, Cooper. Yep. Maybe you're the one in the cult. Oop. You should come to a meeting. You should learn the truth about where your wife works. Hollywood forever. Funeral home. So this is what caused the divorce then. Is Janie asleep? Uh, she's reading Little House on the Prairie to Roosevelt. Ah, does you like it? Mm-hmm. She's getting more and more distant. You know, no dogs in the vaults. Wow, she is locked in. Yeah, dogs eat meat. It's an avoidable inefficiency. Dogs can actually live on vegetables, just so you know. And grains. Cats need meat, though. That's not really the question, is it? Yeah, how do you know for sure we're going into these vaults? I mean, what else do you have in store for us? Are the, are the blue jumpsuits? Are those mandatory? What if I don't want to wear a blue jumpsuit? What if I want to wear a green one? And while you were away at war, I stayed home. I know you did. I was checking the mail every I day. I was waiting by the phone every <laughs> night. And every night I was driving myself crazy, imagining the worst. I mean, but when the bombs drop, a two-hour drive ain't gonna cut it. It's focusing so, yes, on end of the world better? I will do whatever it takes to make sure the people I love, that is you and that is Janie, aren't among them. A special vault for management where we will oversee all of the other vaults. Mm, death to management. You don't get it. That is the best we can possibly hope for. Is it? Or is that what you've been told? So how did things go so wrong? I mean, I'm seeing it, but I'm wondering what the breaking point was. Goosey McLean. Oh, no, no, it's, it's Lucy. They didn't get you a monocle, sir? You're from here? Five generations. Mm -hmm. Brought up. Oh, well, I just thought because... Of your eye? These people, am I right? <laughs> am I right? <laughs> oh, God. I grabbed a moldy one. What do you mean by that? If you want to get elected, you have to respect their traditions and tolerate them and not call them surfies. Awful. Wow. We took our share of the men and gave them a home because it's what we do. We test on them. What was the joke? <sighs> I forget. All I know is it was a huge bomb. <laughs> wow. Any other questions? I do have one. Uh, Why do you have one eye? It's on level 12. And why can't we go there? <laughs> Sir. I only wanted to. Goodbye, Goosey. That's it. Your name is Goosey from this point forward. Sorry, ma'am. Y'all gonna have to escape this place. Don't know how, but you're definitely gonna have to. Why are you grinning so hard, fam? You don't even know how to get in there. Or how to get your suit out. Plus, don't you need a fusion reaction core or whatever? You can't just steal a fusion core, bro. You don't even know what it does down here. Unit 428. How about you sleep in a room of your own tonight? Have a hot shower. That thing's never coming off if you put it on. And when you say hot shower, what does that mean exactly? Poor thing. Ugh, this is sad. For once, Maximus's instincts are right on the money. Don't watch it. It's probably hypno some type form of hypnosis. He figured out the hot shower. I wouldn't eat any of that. I feel like it's drugged. Not caviar, though. Ugh. Not a fan, personally. That's going to be hilarious, because now, before, he was the one who wanted to leave. And Lucy wanted to stay, and now Lucy's starting to figure out slowly something's wrong here, and she's gonna wanna go, and he's gonna wanna stay, which is understandable, because this is gonna be the best he's ever had until they start experimenting on him, of course. Go up to 12, Lucy. Go see what they don't want you to know. Oh, there's the history lesson you never got. Why does this fault have it? So they had 30, 30 years before they fell. She was wanting to know what happened over the last 200 years. Now she knows. Is that a two-headed bear? What's going on? It's a surface dweller tradition. 
I can get a little rambunctious on my taste. That didn't explain what was going on, but thanks. Thanks so much for your xenophobia. My lord, he's been walking for 40 days and 40 nights. Oh, the government, spelt with, him, with an I. You boys know who you just brought in? I don't even want to know what's in there. Would you mind? I would, that's disgusting. I don't know what keeps you going. Hatred, revenge. Or maybe. Yuck. You're still looking for her. Mm-hmm. The daughter, Janie? Mind your fucking mouth. That's the president of the government you're talking to. Wow. No one's gonna miss him. Not a, not a soul. A whole lot of chatter about some woman. Name of Moldava. Mm-hmm. They call her the Flame Mother. Oh, wow. She's got an extra name. Now you got anything to say in your defense? Guilty as charged. Okay, you took one for Lucy. Oh, I must have killed nine or ten people. My he daddy did. lives in Philly. Oh, well, he's probably dead. <laughs> My daddy ain't no coward. Oh, then he's dead. Thank you kindly. I'm pretty sure you knew that was going to happen, President. Why? Moldaver. Do you have this picture on your wall? That's Moldaver. It's not how I remember her at all. Who was she to you? Flashback. <laughs> we meditating? Oh, I don't get it. It's just feeling a bit culty. It's all I'm saying. Maximus, whoa, God, what's going on? Okay, we're just getting naked for... Okay, this is an orgy. This escalated quickly. Oh, Lucy's face! Uh, it was fun until... Wow, so, so many chests. And yeah, we'll see if I stay. You'll stay. Because it's an orgy? We remember. Flame mother is Mulde. Okay. So Moldaver is some form of a ghoul? Is that what we're picking up here? Ma'am, are you just doing these things not knowing? This could be a whole satanic ritual. What are you doing? Covering ourselves in their ashes. Ashes. I was thinking it was ashes. You just rubbed on your face. Yeah, you see why you don't just join cults? Are you drinking? Oh, you're drinking blood even better. It's gonna be a big old picture of Moldaver. Who you're looking for? Okay, Hag, how are you still alive 200 years later, and why are you not all chewed up? I have questions. A big fan. So is she the first test subject? Now you know the stakes, hey? You heard Moldaver was a big deal. Now you know she's literally a cult leader. So deal with that. You were right about this place. You don't want to leave now. You want to make my cock explode now? What? Sorry, intercourse? There we go. No, we need to leave. No, he's right good now. now. These people are insane. There was something in the food. But this isn't it. They gave me a robe. Right? Isn't that all that matters? I'm going to prove it to you, okay? I'm not leaving without you. That's sweet, but you should go. Maximus is not the sharpest tool in the shed at all. They tell you never to go there, but you can just access it via the elevator? Are people really just that trusting? I guess they would be. Uh, that's a gulper, right? They just keeping that around for fun? Uh oh. And look at you walking straight to the torture chamber all by yourself, Luce. Oh, she's giving birth to, what, what do we want to know what those are? No, I don't actually. So she gave birth to something that just ate her. Yep, let's go, Luce. You've got a functioning uterus. Definitely get out of there. Was that who was in the... In the tank? Because she looks pregnant. Oh, don't tell me there's a row of them. Oh my God, Lucy, get out of there now. They're going to put you... They're going to impregnate you with alien babies. You're not looking behind you. I think you should let everybody out. Open all of them. Let everybody out, Lucy. That's gonna hurt. Ball. Oh wait, it's a woman. Meanwhile. 
And that's it. Okay, well, thanks, Maximus. Useful as usual. <laughs> I'm kidding. Let me not be too hard on him. I mean, look, this is the first and the best he's probably ever had in his life of having, the first time of having the best of everything, you know, compared to what he's had on the surface. I mean, my man doesn't even understand what happens when it pops, okay? But yeah, interesting episode. We got some more backstory leading up to kind of why we are where we are in the world today. This this world of, of nuclear grossness. And um, we got quite a bit of John's, uh, we got quite a bit of Cooper's past or the ghoul's past. We see that he basically just went on a bender when he was at that shop. Like I really thought that he was gonna just grab his vials and go, but I guess he doesn't really have a purpose now because he was on that bounty, but I think he realizes now the bounty is probably long gone. But also after last episode, I think he recognized, or not last, but the one before that, Lucy kind of gave him a moral dilemma, so to speak, right? Because she did help him when she didn't have to. So I think he's still trying to deal with the guilt over that a little bit. But anyways, we see that he was brought to this person who's called himself the president of the new government with an eye. And um, that was probably like the least uh, uh, eventful part of it, but really was just the, the flashbacks, finding out how he's involved with the vault tech because we saw a couple episodes ago that he was violently, viscerally angry at even seeing the word vault or seeing the advertisements for it. And now we know that this is most likely, we also we know, I can, we can assume that it's because I think it's what tore his family apart, right? So we see that his wife was working for vault -Tec. I don't think she started out that way. I think she started out as an actress and then she eventually got in, maybe not. I just assumed because she was on the set those that few episodes ago that she was an actress too, but I guess she was always a vault -Tec person. But anyway, we see that she got Cooper involved, making him the spokesperson for the vault -Tec. And of course, I think that sweetened her position inside of vault -Tec. And I like that they show how it started out as kind of like, oh, this is just a job, but then it slowly but surely started to permeate every part of his wife's life, right? She, everything about it, right? She wants to be involved with it, throwing parties. She wants to do more and more and more things for that. And then you can see how her and Coop were starting to get further and further apart because Coop didn't want to have, like he thought it was just a job. He was thinking of it as, okay, you're just working at this job. Like that's all it is. We're going to retire. We're going to go live. Like he's like, I'm playing a cowboy, but I really want to live this dream. I want our family to be out in a farm somewhere chilling. And she's looking at him like, oh, you silly, silly man. I don't know what you're talking about, right? And sadly you can see that Coop's not really picking up on her body language or picking up on the fact that she really is acting much different and actually kind of being a bit distant to him, which is a bit sad until, I mean, obviously not until things got a lot further. Like when he started to realize that she had the same little, you know, wrist thingy that they all wear and that she's taking it with her everywhere. And that she's not, the nine to five is not nine to five anymore. She's constantly talking about vault -Tec, hosting things for vault -Tec, getting him involved, getting herself involved. And so he starts to realize that this is overtaking their life. And he's like, like, why do you wanna? And I kind of get where he's coming from. Like, I think it's very interesting in this episode that the argument they have at the dinner table and kind of, you know, throughout the episode really Really, they both are bringing out very valid reasons as to why they're not happy with this vault situation. You know, on his side, he's like, why are we doomsdaying, right? Why are we thinking about all these terrible things that could happen instead of living our lives and, and spending time with each other and, you know, really having the best life? And his wife, on the other hand, is saying, no, but I know what I know now. Like, vault is telling me that a nuclear event is inevitable and this is the only way we'll survive and not everyone's going to get the opportunity to survive. So we need to do everything we can to make sure that not only that we get in, but but as she says, we get in the good one, right? And so he's of course like, what are you talking about? Like, and I guess the part that he wasn't picking up on was the fact that she kept speaking about it like it was an inevitability. Not like a possibility, but an inevitability. And that's really what he, you know, he should have been like, how do you, how are you speaking with such certainty? that this is gonna happen. We don't know that this is gonna happen. Yes, the chance is there, but there's also a chance that an asteroid is gonna hit Earth too. We don't live our lives thinking like that, right? So why are you so sure? But anyway, I like that they had that conversation where, you know, Coop's like, I went to war. Like I've already seen the ugliness of it. Like people romanticize it. vault is like trying to profit off of it. I don't think that's cool. But then she's saying, okay, yeah, you were there, but I was the one waiting at home with our daughter and not knowing what was going to happen next and constantly living under threat that things were going to go bad. So, you know, both of them having very valid viewpoints of war and the toll that it takes. And in her mind, like she said, I'm protecting our family. This is my way of guaranteeing that no matter what happens, we're in a good position and we're going to be okay. Right. So, you know, it's like I said, both of them have a valid point. And sadly, I do think that his wife knew 
that vault was going to do something to stir the pot. Maybe not to this level, but she definitely knew something. And that's, I think, why she kept pulling back from Coop, because I think she knew that if she ever told him, he'd never be okay with it, right? He'd never just be like, yeah, yeah, let's go with it, you know? But in her mind, she already was so in deep and so... Her mentality had been so affected by the, the cult nature that vault created that she just felt like this was the only way. There was no other, other other way around it. Like she said, you know, living on a farm is not going to be enough. And so my guess is that um, even though we saw that they kind of made up at the end of that argument, I have no doubt that it didn't end there. And now we know why. Because we see that with Coop, none of his friends showed up to his vault parties and stuff because most of Hollywood apparently was anti vault -Tec. And so he met up with one of his co-workers or former co-stars. And basically this guy's like, none of us or most of us here in Hollywood, we think that this vault situation is shady and here's why. And he talks about, you know, the, what was he, what did he call it? Fiduciary responsibility. And basically lets him know that vault is only a viable product if they have a reason to be a viable product, right? And because they are literally built to withstand a nuclear disaster, who's gonna wanna invest the multiple millions it's gonna take to buy these and create them unless there's a real reason. The possibility of a threat is not enough. People are not gonna wanna invest in this if the threat is low. And as he said, They've got a lot of investors. They've gotten millions of dollars from people. They need to be able to make it profitable. How do they make it profitable? Especially if the world suddenly decides to be at peace. That's not gonna work. They need war. They need a nuclear situation to prove that their vaults are necessary. And so he was basically spelling it out for Coop without saying it directly that vault is gonna cause a war because they need it for business and war is business. And we see that at first Coop doesn't want to hear it. He's like, oh, you know, it's capitalism. You know, you're looking at it too. Like you said, you're looking at it like a cult, but he's like, isn't vault -Tec a cult too? Like when you think about it, both of these mentalities are a bit extreme. But anyways, he gives him a card to come meet at this this place um, where he says a lot of the other actors, etc., they're all basically trying to work to destabilize uh, vault Because we also find out that vault at that point in time had more money than the US government because the US government had run themselves dry with all of their different exploits. So he was like, the government's gonna have no choice if they need money and vault the only place on local soil that can give it to them. So we see that Coop did go to the meeting, but we don't know what he said. Like we didn't get a chance to hear what was said, but we've now found out that Moldova is in fact, um, I would have to say she's gotta be a mutant of some sort too. She's gotta be a, a ghoul because how is she still alive? Unless she's cloned herself. That's another option too, because obviously vault into some pretty serious science, but either way, she's either a clone or a ghoul, but one that's doing a lot better than the ones that were outside of the vault. And uh, yeah, so, or I don't actually, I don't know if she was in the vault. Let me take that back, but we don't know how she's here yet. The point is she's got the same face. So it's either the same person or something or a clone. Like I said, that's my theory anyway. So anyhow, he sees her and we know that in the future or in the current that he was saying when he saw the poster of Moldova, he's like, she looks different than what I remember. So I think he hasn't seen her, which I guess he wouldn't have because at the beginning of the series, he was underground. So yeah, he's been out of the loop for a while. So now he's seeing that she's resurfaced and I'm sure he's got questions now. And now he has a reason to head to her now, right? Because without the head, he didn't have a reason, but now he has a reason because he's gonna wanna know like, how the hell are you still alive if you don't look like me, right? Or you're not one of us. So yeah, I feel like that's where he's gonna be headed. And we see that the surface people that are in Vault 4 are basically worshiping her. She's got a whole cult that's, that's basically sustained itself until now. And um, that kind of brings us to Lucy and Maximus. They're now in Vault 4, which we heard at the beginning of the episode was the first vault that they built, I think. And I guess that was their pilot vault. So it's still going, but it's become quite different. It's a lot different than the other vaults. Mainly in that it is the experimental vault. It's where the science is. And we see that they've got some really crazy experiments going on there. The episode said it was around the effects of radiation on the human body or on the human condition and clearly those have evolved over 200 years to get crazier and it looks like they're just taking surface people and using them as test subjects possibly also people who were in the vault as well but yeah it's a crazy place and unfortunately you know lucy goes in feeling fully trustworthy because why wouldn't she and Maximus was the one who was a bit suspicious, rightly so, 
But then of course, um, Maximus got sucked in, right? As he should. He's naive. He's never had a nice life. Having all these things, these conveniences, the safety, he's liking it. He's kind of letting himself be lulled by it. And now he doesn't want to leave. He has no reason to leave. So he thinks, I think there's something in the food too. If I, I'm just, something's telling me they put something in the food because he seemed a lot more relaxed after he ate it. But anyway, now Lucy, of course, has figured out after seeing the weird cult behavior, first of all, then seeing that Moldova, who she's seen the bad side of is being worshipped. She's like, something is going on here. And then she checked out 12 where all the experiments are happening. And now, yes, she uh, she tried to convince Maximus to leave as we saw, but he was not hearing it. And she doesn't want to leave him there because she's a good person. But all the same, I don't think she can get out easily anyways at this point. But it looks like she's been captured. What's going to happen to her? Are they going to try to test on her? We're not sure, but she is the lead of the show. So I'm not that worried that anything crazy is going to happen. But yeah, we'll have to figure out if Maximus snaps out of it in time to go and help her because he's going to need to. Like he knows where the fusion core is. He can go get that, get his suit. And I think he's going to need that to bust out of Vault 4. But I think we need to find out a bit more about what Vault 4 is. I think it is part of the management. 31 is definitely management uh, back in her old cell, or her old vault. But yeah, we're now understanding more about what this management thing is, what it means, and the fact that all of these different vaults have been controlled from possibly one or two other vaults. And apparently some of them got hip to it and realized that it's just not fair and probably some other things. So yeah, the plot is thickening. I'm really liking the way they just keep layering into the story. And like I said, each, each episode gives us a few more pieces to help us round out this picture and figure out what this puzzle is all about. But yeah, there's still a lot more questions to be answered. So once again, I'm looking forward to the next episode to find out. So yeah, good one. I enjoyed it a lot. Hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.